welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and you guys, I am so excited. We have had the opportunity to talk to some amazing authors about some amazing books, and today is no different. I'm going to show this to you in the camera. Porter and Midge out and about, and this is a The Puppy Adventures of Porter and Midge, a book about two puppies who go on adventures written by dog people to share with the general public. And, and I am so excited. So Giselle Nevada and Jenny Chen, welcome. I'm so excited to have you join me. Thank you for Thank having you. us. So cool. So Jenny, you and I have talked before and mm -hmm. we have had many conversations about the idea of changing the conversation within the general public. Right. And, and, and getting people information that meets them where they live, where they are. Yeah. And, and I, I really feel as I read through this book, that's really what you guys are trying to do. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Now I'm going to cry. No crying. <laughs> there is literally no crying in, in baseball or dog shows or at all. <laughs> Here's a joy. Um, it, it is something, you know, because as dog people, we live, breathe. I mean, these dogs, our lives, we, our entire lives revolve around them. So our way of communication is certainly at a different level because we've got this depth of knowledge that the general public doesn't necessarily have. You know, they might have a couple of pets throughout their li lifetimes where, you know, we've got dogs that we train, we show, you know, live with us, live with somebody else and those sorts of things. So being able to communicate to someone who can only take a tiny snippet of what we understand in the dog world is so difficult. And then trying to translate that to a child who may not have all of the skills, the communication skills, the mobility skills, you know, the ability to piece everything together. How do we communicate these ideas to kids, you know, to this different audience so that as they grow and they learn, like, these are the things that are really important. How do I put myself in a puppy shoe? What does a puppy see when they're out in public? Right. So that's, yeah. We're very passionate about this. I love it. I love it. So, <laughs> Giselle, give us an introduction to yourself, a little 411, as they say. Sure. Um, hi, I'm Giselle Nevada. Um, I've owned Mastiffs for over 20 years now. Um, my first two Mastiffs were actually from rescue, um, had behavior issues, all of that. Um, my second Mastiff was a foster fail, and um, he was a too afraid to come into the house when we first got him. So. We worked with lots and lots of trainers, for at, le at least in Murphy's case. And what really got him out of the show was actually having a job. And in this case, he loved pulling a cart. Oh and when he had a cart on, he was a completely different dog. Um, and after that, he just got better and better and more confident and more confident. And That's so amazing. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. And actually, it was uh, with Dick Schumer, uh, who is one of uh, Jenny's mentors, yes. who yeah. got him out of his shell. So... Well, anyway, after dealing with those two rescues where they're all their behavior and medical issues, um, it really inspired me to find a well-bred Mastiff for my next puppy. And I met Karen Flocker, who is, the, um, she's no longer breed, she's New Beginnings Mastiffs. And I contacted her because um, she had taken several um, Mastiffs to obedience titles. And that was something that That's I impressive. had always wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, and, and, and she was also, as a breeder, like that was like 20 plus years ago, she was really, really into the uh, importance of like puppy socialization and that rules of seven thing yes. about. And so, um, and so, you know, we chose her because I really had a passion for like wanting my dogs to work and do things. So um, fast forward to now, um, I am on my sixth and seventh Mastiff, um, both of which have uh, working titles so and yeah. and so i love that the characters in the book the dogs porter and midge represent your guys's breeds right a mastiff and a great <laughs> mountain dog so phenomenal jenny they were actually go ahead oh, sorry. no you're fine um porter and midge were at, we got porter and midge at the same time actually mm -hmm. so we by accident, we act, <laughs> by accident um and we um uh, Jenny was here in Austin at the time, so we actually socialized them in many of the spots that are in the book. Oh my gosh, um, we took so the many pictures. Real life, true story. They, it it mm -hmm. actually is. It actually is. Well, the story arc is not 
true, but most of the places that we're in are in the book is places that um, Porter and Mitch actually went to. So that is so fabulous. Okay, so Jenny, you are perhaps better known in the Laotian community, but talk to us about your Swissy journey and kind of what brought you specifically to this book. So I um, started in Swissies about two decades ago as well and okay. quickly followed with the Lauchen. Um, and I did get, you know, my greater Swiss was my very first dog. And I got him thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna do obedience, I'm gonna do all this stuff. And one of the litter mates happened to live close by and they knew Dick Schumer. And that's, I think the first time that Giselle and I kind of met. Um, I mean, we saw each other all around town and things like that. And, and Dick was amazing. He was a man that had new fees. He did service work with his new fees. And the part that was so critical in his education, not just that he was the most giving person, extremely knowledgeable, but he had a knack for helping you understand what the dog is feeling, putting the dog in your shoes. If I was a dog, what is the picture that I see? How is my physical body? How, how is my, you know, carriage, my tone? How is that communicating to a dog? He was just incredible, just a really incredible trainer. Um, and he's been a pivotal person in many people's lives. He's just, you know, really incredible. But that's that's one of the places that Giselle and I met. Um, <laughs> so I started in Greater Swiss. The Louching came quickly after. Um, and uh, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be talking about my... <laughs> started how, showing and, this. And how did... I want to know about the journey. Because, again, okay. I, Jenny, you and I, our point of connection mm -hmm. is that outreach to John Q. Public, mm -hmm. right? So, so talk to me about your train of thought to get you to this book. And this is your second book. Am I understanding that right? Um, or you're first working edition. on your second? Okay. Second book is written okay. in the process of illustration. Okay. <laughs> um, and we stumbled across this book because um, when I was in Austin, I started Keep Austin Dog Friendly. It was a list of all the dog friendly places, all the events. We would do things. I mean, this is well before social media. I mean, this was back in the day. Um, because we were so interested in making sure that dogs are being, they're being raised, being socialized, understanding the world is not bad. Because that's, that's what a breed is. The breeder Swiss, they can be suspicious. I mean, this is a breed that can be a little bit aloof. They have a stranger danger. Are you my friend or not? If you're my friend, we're best buds. If you're kind of weird, I'm gonna look at you, sit here. Um, so it is a breed that does need that socialization. You absolutely have to do it. And often happen to be the place to do it because it was so dog friendly. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the reasons why Giselle and I just started taking our puppies out. And by accident, I mean, we did not intend on getting Midge. Um, she came into our home because the breeder's like, this is a really nice dog. I would like her to go to a show home. Can you come you? pick her up on Sunday? <laughs> I picked you. I, and I said, okay, I can come. I'll get on a plane and I'll pick her up. So um, that's how Midge kind of accidentally came into our lives. It wasn't planned. Um, and then we just started going out to places and people we know. Um, if you scroll back through my Facebook and some of the other pictures, you're gonna see a lot of these scenes, very similar scenes. And Do if it, you look what? real closely, yeah, you will see a lot of people who are in the dog world also drawn in. They may not be the characters, but they may be the people, you know, walking around in right. the street, you know, the veterinarians, you know, other people in other dogs that you may already know from the show world. Um, so we try to incorporate a lot of that. And we also wanna incorporate a lot of the breeds that aren't as well known. Like we have a Bouvier in there. There's a I mean, they're not. Polly. I'm like, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, so we really wanted to get this book out and we really wanted to speak to a different audience because it's not just, oh, this is what I'm gonna do with an adult. This is what we need to do with a puppy. And now you layer on a kid. How do you get a kid to understand that? Because they don't understand the same things we understand. They're not able to pick up the visual cues, the body language that dogs have as well as humans. But how do we introduce them to this idea of socialization? I, I just think it is adorable for starters <laughs> but yeah. it's so talk about the evolution from because there's a lot of p i see a lot social media jenny you're always on social you see this everybody has these great ideas right and and some of them come mm -hmm. to fruition and some of them don't so talk about <laughs> your guys's process like you work together to do this what is the process to actually go from i have this really great idea to i have this really like incredibly adorable book. Oh man, I think um, it was one night, Giselle messaged me, she's like, you know what quarter mid sounds like? A book. <laughs> 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 no. 
that's how it started. And I think she said something along the lines of maybe we should write a children's book. And me back then, I said yes to everything. I mean, I, I'm a little bit like that now still. I was going to say, I don't wait, say no. changed? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much everything's yes, you wanna, and then I'm like, yes, how do we make it happen? And at the time, I was doing a lot of writing. I was uh, in the content creation side of things and marketing, so I was like, well, this is kind of fun. And this was also during that evolution, that, you know, in my professional life where I work in data. Mm -hmm. We talk about technical things. It's very dense. It's complicated. But this is a totally different audience, and I'm like, this sounds like a fun challenge. How do you get something so complex like dog behavior and socialization and training and distill that to a point where a child can actually relate to it without using all the technical terms that we use in training? Right, right. So Giselle, what what put that little bean in your brain, right? The bee in the bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the pictures that Jenny was taking of Porter and Midge were just so, so cute. It had to be a book. And I think we first started with, let's just take the pictures and, and like do some sort of blog or something along those lines. Um, I started talking to a friend of mine who is a neurobiologist uh, in um, UT Austin. And she was like, well, I have this friend who works in UT and she wants to actually start illustrating. That's okay. Anne. And um, Anne this is Campbell, Anne's first. Right? Is the, yeah, is Campbell. The illustrator. Yep. And, and it's, you know, she wants to try to do this. And we're like, oh, let's, let's do it. You know, let's see how we can do this. And, mm -hmm. and so we met mm -hmm. Anne and it just, we all hit it off. And, and, and Take eight years people. later. <laughs> It definitely takes a village. We are at the Kentuckiana Cluster of Dog Shows, and I'm talking to Dr. Karen Potter. She is a German wire hair pointer breeder, a Trupanion breeder, and she's also a veterinarian. And Karen's going to talk about what Trupanion means to her as a breeder, and also what it means for her as a veterinarian. When I became a Trupanion breeder, and I sent my litters out, I knew that they were going with 30 days of coverage had one of my owners have an emergency with them. That's comforting to me as a breeder to know that they can get help. As a veterinarian, there are many cases where we have to make decisions on how to treat things based on financial restraints. And when the financial restraints come into play, we can't always do absolutely everything for that pet. So if my puppies are covered, at least for those first 30 days, I know that if they get sick, they can get the best possible care. So talk about each of the steps, like you take them through vaccinations and going to the vet and learning to sit quietly. And, and these are things that children are going to be involved with and their parents are going to be reading them the book, right? And so the parents are getting the information as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jenny, go ahead. So um, well, we, we wrote it because these are typical things that we do want puppies to go through. Um, and, and we do want the kids to understand also what's happening, right? Because they're like, we're well, going to the vet. And they're like, well, why? Well, they need to be vaccinated before they go out in public and make sure that they're safe and they're protected. And, you know, the other things that we went from step to step and um, it, our real life didn't always happen in this order, but we wanted to make sure like there was a goal for the child, right? I want to be in this parade. I want to take my puppy, but it's not just, you know, I do it without any work. We also wanted to instill that like it has a process. There's things that you have to do. There's behaviors you have to learn because back then it was very much like puppy obedience was sit, stay, come. It wasn't calm in public, you know, relax, you know, calm on command and that, that type of thing, which when I was doing a lot of training for, um, you know, general manners and things like that, those were the questions that we were getting. They're like, well, my dog sits, but is also a pest and constantly just is always doing things around the house and can't calm. I'm like, okay, because you didn't actively teach him to calm. Mm -hmm. And like, so that's why we went the route that we did saying, okay, here's all the new places we go, but we're going to focus on one skill. And the skill, the theme kind of for this book is like, you know, the calm in public, don't be too afraid, but calm. You can get excited, but stay calm. So. And so at the back of the book, one of the things that I think is just genius is a, is a checklist. So talk about that. So, um, yeah, we had a checklist, like we had a real life yeah, checklist. You know what I'm saying? Like to, yeah. I go through yep. some of it, it was perfect. It's what I've seen it in a, a very similar type of thing, mm -hmm. in like, um, 
training therapy dogs, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And we wanted to make it kind of like an activity because there are lots of right. checklists. And some breeders even send their puppies home with these like, hey, you've got to see 100 people within the first 10 days and all of this stuff. And so we wanted to have an activity so the kids can say, okay, this is what I'm working towards because this is very integrated. And that's why we have the activity books too. It's not just this is your bedtime story. It's how do you apply this to real life? How do you look at the things on the list and say, okay, my dog, has they, have they been on an elevator? Have they been to an airport? Like here's all the list of things they can expose themselves to when they're ready at their own time um, and so that's why we wanted to include the checklist because it wasn't just follow this book this is a training manual um, it's here's how to do it in the different places now here's your checklist of other places you can go other things that you can see right so Giselle and I, I just wanted to thank by the way that that wonderful wonderful list was actually written by Virginia wind who is a mastiff person Okay. And so I wanted to make sure that people knew that. So okay, thank uh, you, Virginia. Gonna, uh, my literally, my question was, and where oh. does the list come from? Good job. Oh, yeah. you read my mind. <laughs> Perfect, Virginia <laughs> Wind. <laughs> so, talk to me on your end, Giselle. What are the pieces that stand out to you in the book as just being like super impactful for children, or the ones that meant the most to you personally? So the one thing that we are getting a lot of feedback on is that kids are actually wanting to work with their dogs. We've actually sent, um, I think we sold possibly about one or 200 books during our advanced uh, advanced uh, sales and all the parents are coming back and they're like, they love it. And, and one of the things that I love that Anne did was they she included so many different types of people in there so it's very, it's very, very inclusive yeah it's very yes. inclusive in terms of body type etc and and what i really love about it is it's not just like okay you know expose a person to some someone with no hair these are real people and right. i love i love the fact that i can open any page of this book and i know everyone that's in it Oh, so, I think that's, that's really amazing. And I, ha I have to tell you, I was really struck by the inclusivity. I thought that was amazingly well done. And I just think that, you know, as we're as we're talking to children, we have families that probably got a dog during the pandemic because everyone did. And <laughs> or, yep. You know, they're they're struggling maybe with some of these issues. And even I think, and to speak to me, you guys, as uh, particularly Jenny as a trainer, I feel like there's things in here that you can apply even if it's not a baby puppy. Uh -huh. Oh, absolutely. These are life skills. Right. And especially when the dogs get around that teenage stage and they pretend they've never been trained a day in their life, especially at the national when it's being recorded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In front of yep. God and everybody. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, we see like this as a foundational skill. Like, mm -hmm. I, I stopped using the term, like, take your dog to puppy class. I start saying, here's the skill set you need. You need, you know, calm, bite inhibition, um, you know, rewarding when they're not jumping. Like, these are just the skills that we need. And how Each do we build that in? So it's you know, not, not dragging you down the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um so it's it's very much like I view this book like even if you didn't get a dog as a young puppy, you can still teach them. You can still form those habits. Um, you know, we've always we've gotten dogs at an older age as well, and we go back and we do this. We do couch training. If you want to be on the couch, you're calm. That's yeah. the rules. There's no jumping on the couch, or else you go downstairs. <laughs> I, I I have to admit, I everybody else has like their perfect like place command and my command in my house if the dogs because i have wire hair pointers right so they're crazy and so <laughs> if i need the dogs to be calm i say go get on the couch and that's their place command right is just go get over there and lie down i don't care you know mm -hmm. just stay there right and i think that you, no matter what you pick pick a chair pick a bed pick a whatever mm -hmm. right that ability to put a dog somewhere and like have it mm -hmm. be in its position mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. And, and one of the other feedback that we got on the book is the socialization list is actually good for babies, too. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Socializing oh, uh, children. Yeah. A lot of the moms came back with that. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, I say it all the time. Kids, dogs and men. <laughs> 
she just got a firm, fair, and consistent all the way across the board. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I it's, it. um, yeah, I, I, the feedback that we've gotten has just been really great, you know, because there's not a lot of these types of conversations that we have with kids. You know, we say, hey, tell the dog to sit, and the child says, sit. Okay, well, how about the rest of it? I mean, their lives, their behavior is more than just a handful of commands. Like, we need to teach them these other habits and really build them in at a young age. Well, and I really liked the, like, there's boundary building. You know, there's all of these kinds of things mm -hmm. that that are useful, as you say, as the moms are replying, for their kids, too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. so tell us a little bit, Giselle, go ahead and take us through like just a brief review of the whole um, out and about adventure from we go to the vet's office to get our vaccines and our end goal is to go to the parade, right? Yes, yes. So, give so us a basic synopsis there. Sure. So uh, the the main characters of uh, the book are Laura and CJ. CJ was actually named after my breeder's son. So <laughs> that, um, we, back then we didn't have any nieces or nephews to, to actually use for this. So um, they want to join uh, the Independence Day Parade. And so their, uh, their camp counselor says, well, your dogs need training before you do that. They can't be afraid of things. And so um, how do we do that? And, and the 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 basically the book takes them to a whole bunch of different places and teaches them you know how to introduce um their dogs to new uh and and exciting things more or less um we went through we did a we have a scene in south congress in austin um we went to uh dorsey uh what's her name barger is that barger. right mm -hmm. house yes. farm farm mm -hmm. farms yeah, I saw where we got to really cute yeah yeah and the comments were we didn't have gustava the goose in there so jenny we missed that one sorry sorry <laughs> so um and then we did like a beach scene a water scene and then finally at the end of the at the end of it you see the dogs actually up there on the float right you know chests held high chins held high you know doing well with all the commotion that's happening. I mean, that was one of the things I was like, okay, so this is such a, I think, a really relatable thing for mm -hmm. kids and adults, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And, Go ahead, Giselle. No, you're good. And Oh, yeah. And that's what we're trying to do with the rest of the series of the books. We have more than one. Um, we're going to try to focus on one foundational skill in each book and take the kids through a story arc to teach them how to how that skill is useful in real life so See, giselle i'm pretty sure you're reading my mind because literally that was my question <laughs> talk, to me, talk to me about what we can be seeing going forward and, and so how many skills sets books do you think are in your brains <laughs> Um, well, at least right now, we have the second book, which is actually called uh, The Puppy Adventures of Port and Midge Pause at Attention. And what it does is it's going to be teaching the importance of checking in with their owners. And the story arc for this particular, the next book, will be taking them through um, having to do community service. And as part of the community service, the kids are like, hey, can we do... Uh, can we take our dogs as well? And so their trainer uh, actually takes them to different places where they can meet dogs that work. And and each of these people, including Dick, Dick Schumer, by the way, who's in that book, awesome. um, will yeah, is going to teach them how to uh, why checking in is important for that particular job. So we're really really excited about it. It's very very cute. Um, and then, and then the other thing that we are sort of working on right now as well is that we got feedback that this is for seven plus, you know, seven years old plus, but we we want something for for um, little kids as well. So um, we're actually writing a rhyming book on just uh, kids safety. So, I, yes, I will tell you, uh, my very first job when I was in college and my internship. Literally, my internship in college 
was working for the um, Salt Lake County Animal Shelter and going to schools and doing presentations Mm -hmm. on animal safety and animal care. And I love that animal safety component. You know, the littles, we'd go to the kindergarten classes or whatever, Mm -hmm. and they really, that's so, so, so important for littles. Yeah. Yeah. So we're hoping that both books will come out by the end of the year as well. So. (laughs) And where can listeners find it? I mean, we'll put it, we'll put a link, but for those that won't go to the website, because they're just listening on their phone, where are they going to find this? Where are they going to be able to buy this for their nieces, nephews, kids, grandkids, you name it. Um, Our books are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, pretty much um, all the big online retailers, but we would also request that people ask their local uh, bookstores to order it because they will have access um, through their distributor. Um, So support your local bookstores. Yes, support your local bookstore. Mm -hmm. And Jenny, I assume that you guys have spoken to AKC Education Department and made this available. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm busy. I, I will get to it after national. <laughs> um, I, know, I will. I will. <laughs> I know. I just know that I did a really great interview with the gal who's running that education department. And this, I said the same thing to my other oh. author that I talked to. These are the kind of things that AKC can help get into classrooms. Right. And I think that that is such a great option. Yeah. Thank and, you. I mean, good idea. The other things I wanted to uh, just kind of point out in the book was not only did we want to celebrate like puppies and socialization, all the fun stuff, we wanted to celebrate people in dogs. So when you look at the other books, you're going to see people like uh, there's a Bouvier pulling the cart in the first book. That's a real dog, a very famous agility Bouvier. But we wanted to celebrate these dogs, these people, because it's not just like, okay, they're getting club awards and stuff. The people who are not in purebred dogs don't get to see that. Like the, um, I don't recall how many titles the uh, Smooth Collie has, but he's a lot. Sure, Tom's hardcore, a lot. One of the highest, like most decorated collies. Like, and they deserve that recognition too, right? The working and, and seeing that, seeing dogs at work and all these other breeds that you don't see every day that you'd have to go out and search for. So yes, there is a louchin in the first book. There will be one in the second book. But I did want to celebrate <laughs> those rare breeds and all of the people, like the immense amount of people. It wasn't just that Giselle and I one day said, hey, we're going to write a book you know, for kids about dog training. It is the years of coaching, the mentoring that we have gotten across the different venues that we really wanted to celebrate and say, hey, like, Y'all had an impact on our lives. You had an impact on our dogs' lives. And what can we do to impact the next generation? I love that. Absolutely love that. Ladies, thank you very, very much. Everybody, check it out. And um, I I foresee a lot of children's books in people's Christmas lists. (laughs) Thank you. And uh, just our website is porterandmidge.com. Porterandmidge.com. We will link it in the show notes. And in, uh, Instagram and Facebook are, is also a Porter and Mitch. So I love it. All right. We will have all the social up and good job, ladies. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you.